At the end of this online module, you should be able to create an XY plot from a single data set, interpret the shape of XY plots, create XY plots with multiple data sets on the same set of axes in the same figure window, on different axes in separate figure windows, on different axes in the same figure window, and format plots for technical presentation. We will learn to plot a single data set on a single set of axes, plot multiple data sets on a single set of axes, create multiple figures, each with its own set of axes, and finally, one figure that contains multiple plots on separate sets of axes. Let's begin with a single data set on a single set of axes, as it is the foundation for all of the others. Let's look at an interesting problem that we can use to understand these learning objectives. You are a bioengineer examining the jumping in a species of hyalid tree frogs to learn about the performance of skeletal muscle during natural movements. This information will be useful in your design of human prosthetics. Of particular interest at this time is the takeoff velocity of the frogs when they initiate jumping. Another engineer has collected data using high-speed cine film. Time in milliseconds and distance traveled in millimeters were collected for three frog species. Pseudochrys crucifer, Osteopolis septendrianalis, and Hyla squarella. You need a plot of the Pseudochrys crucifer data for a presentation to colleagues, and you need to be prepared to describe the plot. Let's give the data set a quick look. All data are saved in a text file called frog pc underscore jump data dot text. I see that the time is in the first column and is in milliseconds and was collected every 2.5 milliseconds up to 30 milliseconds. The distance for the Pseudochrys crucifer is in the second column in millimeters. The rest of the data columns are not needed for the plot we must produce. Since the data are stored in a text file, the file will need to be loaded to process the data in MATLAB. So I began my script by loading and parsing the data into meaningful variables. Notice that I used the read matrix function to load the data from the text file. Then I parsed or separated the two variables I need to plot using meaningful variable names. I used the name frog time for the time data and frog PC dist for the jump distance data for the pseudochrist crucifer frog. Make sure to use both block commenting and variable commenting while coding in MATLAB when appropriate. In the initialization section, it is always necessary to use both block commenting to describe the data set, and variable commenting to tell what a variable is and its units. To plot in MATLAB, we use the command plot. This command requires at least two input arguments, x the independent variable and y the dependent variable. A third input argument is used to format the plot. Let's just apply the first two arguments and see what happens. I don't need to do any calculation with the data, so I'm going to jump down to the formatted text and figure display section and write my plotting code there. Note that in my comment I write distance versus time. Whenever you see or write a phrase like this to describe a plot, it translates to dependent variable versus independent variable, or y versus x. I'm just going to supply the plot command with my x variable, which is frog time, and my y variable, which is frog pc dist, and then I will run my script. What is displayed is the default settings for MATLAB. A blue line connects the data points, and the data points are not given data markers. I need to manage how these data are presented. Since these are measured data, the data points always need markers. I don't know exactly what happened in between the data points, so I might not want to imply that I do. Therefore, I am choosing to not connect the data points with a line. You might add connecting lines if the goal of your plot is to show a specific trend. In some situations, it is common to include the line, especially when your data are time series. The presentation of the data points and line are managed with the third input argument. MATLAB expects a string of up to three formatting characteristics. The string must start and end with matching quotes. Within the line specs, one characteristic can be color, another the data marker symbol, and the last the line style. The order does not matter. Let's see what other options we have in MATLAB for color, data markers, and line styles. We can type help plot in MATLAB. Navigating to the reference page will show us all available options. I'm going to use magenta squares with no line connecting the data points. I use M for my color specification and S for squares. When I push run again, we can see the new plot that is generated. Notice there is no line in this plot. 
The next step is to make sure that the plot is suitable for technical presentation. This means it needs a descriptive title that references the independent and dependent variables, as well as the context. The axis labels must be clear and include units. And the grid needs to be turned on so that I can better interpret the plot. We will create a title using the title function. The input argument of this function is a string. We will use matching quotes around our input. X label and Y label are the functions needed to create the X axis and Y axis labels. These also accept strings as input arguments. The grid on command in MATLAB turns on the grids in a plot. Once we run the script, we see that the axes are labeled. We have a grid and a title. Notice that the title is very long. I will show you a way to manage long titles here. We can create an array of string variables for the title and enclose this array in curly brackets. The array separated by a space or comma will result in a two-line title. I would recommend doing this for all your long titles. Now that we have our plot, when the engineer goes to describe the data, the shape of the trend and the strength of the trend should be described in a way that point to things that can be seen in the plot. In this case, the relationship between distance and time in that first 30 milliseconds of the frog jump appear linear with the distance increasing over time. Because the data points fit quite closely to a line, the strength of the linear relationship appears to be quite strong. Let's go over a summary of what we learned about plotting a single data set. Now we can identify the independent and dependent variables. We know to use data markers with no lines when plotting measured data. We use lines with no markers when plotting theoretical or modeled data. We also saw that we need to create plot titles that clearly describe the context of the data and mention the independent and dependent variables. We now know how to label X and Y axes with clear descriptions and units. Finally, when interpreting a plot, we need to refer to the shape and strength of any trend. So let's assume your colleagues want you to present all of your data for all three tree frogs. There are many ways you can do this. Here are a few. One, you could put all of the data sets on one set of axes. Two, you could plot each data set on separate axes as separate figure windows. Or three, you could plot each data set on separate axes, but put all axes in the same figure window. We will look at how to do each of these plotting options in the remainder of this module. Let's start with putting the multiple data sets on the same set of axes. This problem is the same as the previous one, except for what is in bold. That is, you must plot each set of data on the same plot in the same figure window. This is almost the same as the load and parse the data slide from before. However, the changes are that I named the first data set frog PC dist for the Pseudochrist crucifer distance data, and I also parsed out the Osteopolis septendrianalis distance data in column 3 and the frog HS dist for the Hyla sclerella distance data in column 4. These loaded data will work for all three of the examples we are working on in this module. Always remember to comment your code. I can use the code from the single plot for the frog species Pseudochrys crucifer. I used magenta squares. Magenta is the M and squares is the S. I'm going to change the title for this one since all three frog species data will eventually go on this plot. The axes are labeled and the grid is on, so my plot is suitable for technical presentation. I save and run my script. And we see that we have the plot we were expecting. Okay. So now, let's add the second frog species, Osteopolis septendrianalis, to the plot. I will close the figure window and return to my script. I am adding the code to plot the data for the second frog species, Osteopolis septendrianalis, using blue diamonds, which is a B and a D for the marker symbols. OK, so I save and run. Hmm, I've lost my first set of data and all my formatting. All I have is the second set of data. I need to do something to keep everything I did for the first plot in the window. There is a command called hold that will allow us to plot multiple data sets on one graph. Let's get help on the hold command. The hold on command holds the current plot and all access properties, including the current color and line style, so that subsequent graphing commands add to the existing graph without resetting the color and line style. I can go back to the default mode by adding the code hold off when I am finished plotting on a single graph. 
Okay, so let's try this. I'm going to add hold on before my second plot command and save and run my script. That fixed the problem. Okay, let's go ahead and add the third set of data for the third frog species, Hylosquarella, using black hexagrams, which is a K and an H for the marker symbols. Remember that you can use the hold off command to stop plotting to the same graph. In this example, that is not necessary because I'm not going to be plotting anything else, but I will include it anyway. Notice that in this section, the commenting only includes block commenting. Here, block commenting is sufficient because the function call for each line of code describes what it is doing. So let's save and run once more to make sure the code is running as expected. Okay, now I get all three data sets on the plot, but I can't tell which is which. I need a legend on the plot to make this suitable for technical presentation. MATLAB has a command called legend that will construct a legend using labels that I select and will map those labels to the order in which the data is placed on the plot. Each label should be put in matching quotes. So now we should add a legend to our script. I am adding the legend command with the labels for each of the three frog species, Pseudochris crucifer, Osteopolis septendrianalis, and Hyla squarella. Remember that within the legend command, each label must go in matching quotes separated by commas. Okay, let's save and run to see what happens. Notice that MATLAB chooses the default location of the legend. See here that it covers some of the data. I don't like where it is. Good news is, I can control where the legend goes on the plot. Let's get help from MATLAB. When I go back to help legend in MATLAB, notice that as we scroll down, there are instructions for legend location here. I can use this syntax to let MATLAB know that I want to set the location and then pick a location. I want a little bit more information about how to use this than I'm seeing right now, so I'm going to go to the MATLAB documentation. All right. I have found the location information again. I see in the help that I can set cardinal directions like north and south. When I click this LCN hyperlink, it takes me to a list of possible locations for my legend. Notice I can also set best, which produces the least conflict with the data. Let's give best a try. This put the legend mostly in the lower right. It's okay, but maybe I would like it in the upper left. Let's give Northwest a try. In my opinion, that looks better, but that's my preference. Either would be fine. Let's go over a summary of what we learned about plotting multiple data sets on a single set of axes. The hold command allows us to plot multiple data sets on a single graph. Use hold on after the first set of plot instructions to plot the additional data sets. You can turn off the hold command by using hold off. To make multiple datasets in a single plot suitable for technical presentation, add a legend. You can manage where the legend is placed using the legend command's location options. Let's next learn about plotting multiple datasets in separate figure windows. So again, our problem is the same except for the bolded parts. That is, you must plot each dataset in separate figure windows. And again, we can use exactly the same loading data procedure as in the last example. Let's try creating the first two plots. I'm going to use the plot command and plot the PC frog species data with magenta squares and the OS frog species with blue diamonds. I'm going to just put the titles on these for now, then run. Hmm, I can't find my PC frog plot. All I'm getting is the OS frog plot and that plot is in figure one. There must be something I can do to make multiple figure windows display at once. There is a MATLAB command that allows for multiple figure windows. It is called figure, and the syntax is figure with a value inside of parentheses. The value is called a handle. For this course, we will force the numbering of the figure by supplying an integer value of one or greater as the handle to number the figures. Place the code for figure numbering prior to each plot command with the corresponding figure number. Let's try this in MATLAB. I am first going to close all of my figure windows. It is easy to get confused if you have them open while you're editing and rerunning your code. So you want to start each run from scratch. Close the figure window by clicking on the X of the window or using the close function in the command window. The close function closes the current figure window. 
You can also use the command close all to close all figure windows you have open. Let's create figures 1 and 2. I add the figure 1 code before the first plot command and the figure 2 code before the second plot command. So now I will save and run my code. OK, I get two plots with the figure numbers I assigned. Let's complete the formatting of the first plot. So I will add the X label, Y label, and grid code. Then let's close all figure windows using the close all command and run the script. Hmm, what I see is the labeling only went on to figure two. If I look at the MATLAB documentation for figure, I will read that figure creates a new figure window when using default property values. This new figure window becomes the current figure and it displays on top of all other figures on the screen. The important thing here is that the new figure is the current figure, meaning it's the active figure. All plotting commands following a figure command will be applied to the current figure. My current figure is two. So labeling only went on to figure two. So let's close all figures and try again. I could make figure one the current figure window again by using the figure one command before labeling and running the script. This does put the labeling on figure one. Notice that figure two is left blank. However, also notice that my code goes back and forth between the figures. This is sloppy coding. It is better to get one figure completed and then go on to the next. So again, let's close all figure windows and try again. This time, I'll add the labeling for figure right after the plotting and title code for figure one. Note that this is before I make figure two the current figure. This will make sure that the labeling will go on the correct figure. Since the labels I need for both figures are actually the same, I can copy that bit of code and paste it after the figure two comments to format figure two, and it will also be complete. So I save and run the script, and I see that both of my figures are correctly titled and labeled. I'll leave the plotting of the third set of frog data for you to try. Here I show you a correct figure for the third data set, Hyla Squirella, to check your work if you choose to try the code. Here's a summary of what we learned about plotting multiple data sets in multiple figure windows. When plotting multiple data sets, we may want to use multiple figure windows in MATLAB. MATLAB uses a built-in function called figure to create each window. In this course, we will use integers 1 and greater as the handle for the figure to name each figure window. Be careful to apply the plot and plot formatting commands within the current figure to ensure each figure has been formatted for technical presentation. Finally, let's learn about plotting multiple data sets on separate axes in the same figure window. So again, our problem is the same except for the bolded parts. That is, you must plot each data set on separate axes but in the same figure window. And again, we can use exactly the same loading data procedure as in the last two examples. MATLAB can break a figure window of plots into an M by N matrix. This is done using the subplot command. This command has three input arguments. The first is the total number of rows that are in the figure window. The second is the total number of columns. And the third, called the axes handle, is the location that you want the code that directly follows this command to apply to. This example shows how the plot numbering of axes handles for a 3 by 2 matrix of plots are organized in MATLAB. To figure out the axes handle number, count along the top row of the figure window, then move on to the second row, etc. Note, this is opposite of the way linear indexing is counted in MATLAB, so this can be confusing. Our goal is to produce multiple plots on one figure. There are no calculations needed for this, so I will start coding in the formatted text and figure display section of my script. Let's play with a 2x2 two two configuration for a few minutes. I'm going to put the first set of data to plot in the axes handle 1. I have formatted this plot for technical presentation with a title, axis labels, and grid on. When I run this script, I see that I get a figure that has room for more. Look at the title. We can see that the titles are going to have to be shorter or managed using curly brackets in this sort of configuration. But let's continue anyway. Let's put the second set of data to plot in axes handle 2. I'll copy and paste the items for technical presentation from above and just edit it to work for this second subplot. Again, I save and run. 
Ugh, the titles really are a problem. Let's go back and attempt to fix the titles. It's not ideal, but let's just shorten the titles. When I run, this looks a little better, but my titles are not descriptive enough. Let's go ahead and add the third frog species data in the 2x2 two two, third axis handle position. I'll run the script. Again, notice that the titles are not descriptive enough. In order to deal with this, I can add a title to the figure using a MATLAB command called subplot grid title. It uses the command sg title. This is only available in MATLAB 2018b or later. So I will add that at the end of my subplots block of code. Here, I will make sure that the subplot grid title is very descriptive. Then each subplot's title just needs to help the audience differentiate between the plots. This looks a lot better. Since there are three plots, it might be better to show them all side by side. So let's configure a one row, three column subplot. Again, I'll save and run. Now that they are side by side, I can see that I have an issue. The graphs look fairly similar, but if I look at the y-axis of each, I see that the range is different for all of them. This is misleading to the viewer. I can make them all the same by managing the range of the axes. Axis is a command that can be used to manage the range of the x and y axes. It accepts a vector of four values. The first two values specify the range of the x-axis, and the second two values specify the range of the y-axis. I see that all three frogs' jumps are within 30 milliseconds, but I need a y-axis range between 0 and 80 millimeters to accommodate the Osteopolis septendrionalis frog. So I need to manage the axis range for the first and third subplots. I do this by making my input argument to the axis command a vector containing 0 and 30 for the x-axis min and max values, and 0 and 80 for the y-axis min and max values. I'll save and run my code. Hmm, only the third axis changed. This is because I added the axis command within the block of code after the third subplot. Just like we must put the title labels and grids in each subplot block of code, we must add the axis values in each as well. So I will add the axis code to all three subplots. Technically, I don't need it for the second subplot since that was the default output. Since the plots are so squashed, it might look better as a series of stacked plots. Let's try a three-row, one-column configuration. I save and run. This has some challenges too. I can stretch the window to make it look better. How do I decide? It will depend on how I'm going to use the display of the results for my audience, and which configuration might show the audience the most clear presentation of the data. Here's a summary of what we learned about plotting multiple data sets in a single figure window. Use the subplot command to create multiple plots in a single figure window. The configuration is established by setting the number of rows and columns in the figure window. The axis handle number is determined by counting across the columns and down the rows. Use the axis command to manage the x-axis and y-axis ranges on the plots. This command is useful in all plotting. In summary, we learned a lot about plotting in this module. We learned to create an XY plot from a single data set, to interpret the shape of XY plots, and to format plots for technical presentation. We also learned to create XY plots with multiple data sets, on the same set of axes in the same figure window, on different axes in separate figure windows, and on different axes in the same figure window. Making decisions about which type of plot to use to present data must reflect the data itself and how to effectively communicate your analysis to your audience.